Sonny, let's check our U.S. Air keys to the game. Keys for Delaware. No question, turnovers and big plays. They've got to even out. They know if they can get them to even out, they'll be in decent shape. The wing tee, they want to control the tempo. They want to control the clock. With the wing tee, they think they can do that. They want to mix their coverages. Don't give Michael Payton Marshall's quarterback the same defense two plays in a row. For Marshall, defensively, they hope they have the answers for the wing tee. They better. All the misdirection and trapping, play pass action, that can give you fits. The intensity level, Coach Donovan would like to have it the same this week as he's had it the last two weeks. Kicking game, it has to be sound. Sonny, I think you're right about the kicking game. It's those little things that win these big playoff games. All right, let's check our key performers today. David, no question, some dynamite youngsters here this afternoon. As Delaware goes, so goes Bill Bergantino, or it should be the other way around. Because, boy, if he's got the hot hand, Delaware will put some points on the board. Defensively for Delaware, Mark Hubart, eight sacks. Big play guy defensively, he'll be all over the field. He'll have to be to shut down that high-powered Marshall offense. Certainly probably the best football player I've seen in a long, long time in any league, Troy Brown, when he touches it, most of the time, good things happen. Defensively, William King, he's healthy, he's well, he's in one piece, and I'll tell you what, he's been a whale of a football player the last two weeks. Sonny, William King knows all about the wing T offense. He was a wing T quarterback during his high school days at Capitol High in Charleston, West Virginia. It's the NCAA 1AA semifinals, Delaware and Marshall. More from Huntington in just a moment. One of the best. Welcome back. Right here in Huntington, temperature today, 35 degrees, winds from the north, 7 miles an hour. Cloudy conditions expected today. In fact, the light's already on at Marshall Stadium. Let's head down to the sidelines where Mark Martin will have our sideline reports today. Mark. All right, thank you very much, Dave. I'm joined by Jim Hayes, who follows the Blue Hens of Delaware, sports director at TCI in Delaware. And uh, Jim, first of all, a very confident bunch coming in here today to face Marshall. Well, they've answered the call in the tournament thus far, and they've got loads of stuff to put on the bulletin board. Some of the local media has been a little critical of the Hens, calling them cocky, saying Tubby Raymond was a cocky guy, and saying that the Blue Hens secondary was porous. Now the question is, can the Thundering Herd handle the wing tee? Well, all right, out. Bill Bergantino has not been at 100% this week. He had the flu. He missed the practices down here. He was sluggish earlier in the week back in Delaware. We're told his fever broke at 2 in the morning. He will start and uh, they're optimistic he'll give it 100%. If anyone can answer the call today, it's got to be Bill Bergantino, one of the toughest guys you'll ever meet. This has to be a big game for Tubby Raymond. Has to be. You know, he's nearing the end of his career. He's not going to say when he's going to retire. Maybe if he wins the whole ball of wax this time around, maybe that's all for Tubby, but you know he wants to go out a winner. All right, thank you very much, Jim, for being with us. Okay, Mark, take care. All right, let's go back upstairs now to Dave and Sonny, and Sonny Randall uh, very close with Tubby Raymond having coached his son at the University of Virginia. Yes, sir, Mark. Chris was a heck of a kicker and a mighty, mighty fine young man. Well, down on the sidelines today, we got double trouble with Jim Hayes and Mark Martin. We look forward to their sideline reports today. Our officials today are from the Ohio Valley Conference. Marshall has won the toss, and they have elected to receive to start the game. So much talk this week, Sonny, about these two teams. Delaware at 11-2, champions of the Yankee Conference. Marshall at 10-3, trying to win this game and return to the NCAA 1AA championship game. We're expecting a close game, a lot of points. Two teams that use distinctively different ways of scoring. Well, Dave, uh, we talked about it uh, at the outset. Delaware would like to keep the ball on the ground. I'll tell you what, you try to defense the wing tee and you only have five days to do it. I know Mickey Matthews has spent an awful lot of hours, the defensive coordinator at Marshall this week, trying to get all the answers. Uh, he knows he's got to have them. Misdirection, the trapping, I'll tell you one thing, it can give you fits. And there's a look at Troy Brown on his way out to the field. He'll be returning the, the kickoff from the Delaware Blue Hens. Steve Leo, number 10. Leo is the first ever kicker to earn a scholarship at Delaware, and there is Mr. Everything. Touchdown, Troy Brown. He has just been huge in the postseason for the Marshall Thundering Herd. A lot of concern for the Marshall passing game about wind possibly today, but it really is not that brisk from the north and seven miles an hour. And we are set for football. Glad you could join us. Dave Weekly, Sonny Randall, and Mark Martin. This is the semifinal round of the NCAA 1AA playoffs. Troy Brown's going to get the opportunity right out of the box. On the game's first play, Troy Brown from the four-yard line. 
met solidly before he reaches the 15-yard line by the special teams unit of the Delaware Blue Hands. And now a look at that Marshall offensive unit that leads 1AA football, averaging 42 points per game. There's a look at Michael Payton. Payton was knocked from the quarterfinal round game with the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders with a bruised knee last week in the first quarter. He did not return, but he's expected to be at full strength. And look at those numbers. 28 touchdown passes on the year. Single back set, and here comes Glenn Pedro. Right off the bat, across the 15 and up to the 17-yard line. Time to take a look at that Marshall offensive unit that has been scoring points in bunches. There you get a look at the offensive line. Phil Ratliff on the right side is a 1AA All-American. Johnny McKee could have the toughest assignment today blocking the Kodak All-American defensive line for Delaware. Peyton, Chris Parker, and Pedro. Flanker, Will Brown. The split end is Troy Brown. He's got 85 passes, and the tight end is Mike Bartram. Second down and seven from the 17-yard line. We are just underway from Huntington. Reverse. Inside handoff. Chris Parker, and he has stopped shy of the 20-yard line. A bit of misdirection, a little bit like the wing T, Sonny. Let's take a look at the defensive lineup for Delaware. Up front, they are big and experienced. This group has started every game this season. Votto, the Marshall transfer, Ruber Hondu, and Matt Morrill, the 1AA National First Team All-American. Linebackers Mulhern, Bandish, the top tackler, and Chris Johnson, and a defensive secondary that features two All-Yankee Conference picks. Acker, Jacobs, McIntyre, and Brian Quigg. He had two pickoffs last week against Northeast Louisiana. Third down and four for the Herd. Draw. And they'll run it again. And Parker will not get to the first down marker. Scott Hondru made the stop for Delaware, and uncharacteristically, it's three and out for the Marshall offensive unit. Little delay draw. Big, big play up front. Scott Hondru makes the stop. As you mentioned, three and out. <laughs> we don't haven't seen it. Travis Colquitt set to punt. Marshall finished the year second in net punting in 1AA football. Anthony Ventresca is set to receive it at the Delaware 40-yard. He got all of it. Great punt by Colquitt. Ventresca from his 35. Spins across the 40 up to the 41-yard line. That's a five-yard punt return, and Delaware has excellent field position. The Blue Hens will have the football for the first time this afternoon when we return to Marshall Stadium. Okay, a little over with Delaware. And here's our first look at the wing tee. Bergantino. Kicks the ball. He's got the first down and more into Marshall territory. And knocked out of bounds at the Marshall 41-yard line. And that's the way to start. We've got a skirmish at the 40-yard line. Bill Bergantino. Little reverse option here. Takes to the fullback. Quarterback keeper. Don't give him a whole lot of room. Excellent block downfield. And a big, big first down as the Delaware Blue Hens come out fine. Bill Vergantino is an outstanding open field runner. He had two touchdowns last week in the Blue Hens upset at Northeast Louisiana, 41-18. Reverse. Laying you Johnson. Find some running room. Across the 35 and down to the Marshall 34. That's a gain of seven. Boy, you start one way with the football, you come back the other with Johnson. That misdirection. Watch. Reverse out. Fakes to the fullback. Hands back to Johnson. Right now, the linebackers for Marshall, believe me, their heads are spinning. A lot of misdirection. Johnson, second leading rusher with 725 yards and a dozen touchdowns, averaging seven and a half yards per carry and he picked up seven yards in his first carry of the afternoon second down and three delaware at the marshall 34. again on the ground big stop by william king king puts the stop on rondy organ offensive lineup peter hennigan an all yankee conference selection the right guard backs and receivers Bergantino, Daryl Brown is their leading rusher with over 1,100 yards this season. So now Delaware faces a third down situation for the first time today. Third and one at the 32-yard line. This is the Blue Hens' initial possession of the game. And the Marshall fans come to their feet. I'm 
Johnson. Bergantino, late That's pitch. Lanyu Johnson bumped out of bounds at the 21-yard line, and they pick up the first down easily. Bergantino keeps the ball to the last split second. From ground level, reverses out, fakes to his fullback. Bergantino, wanting to keep the ball if he can, pitches at the last split second. You don't execute it any better than that. Bergantino, he's magic with the football, makes the pitch. Johnson does the rest. Tubby Raymonds feels that Bergantino is like a coach on the field. Both these teams great in third down conversions. Handoff right up the middle. Not much running room to the 20-yard line. Goes Anthony Ventresca. Sonny, what makes this wing T offense so difficult to stop, especially against the run? Well, a big thing, Dave, you don't have but five days to get ready for it. And you haven't seen it all year long. Right here, a little mismatch at the line of scrimmage. Not a whole lot of room. It's kind of like defense in the wishbone. Don't make any mistakes, because if you do, it's the big one. A gain of only a yard, second down and nine at the 21-yard line for Delaware. Long count. Shaved off. This time they try the right side and not much running room. Stacked up at the Marshall 18-yard line. Marcus Lewis on the carry. His first carry of the afternoon for the Delaware Blue Hens. Lewis carries on the sweep. The wing T version of the sweep. Not really a whole lot of room. Lewis tries to cut back. Out of Hugh Stevenson there to make the stop. Marshall cornerback George Thomas did a good job pushing the play back inside with a pursuit, was able to get the ball carrier. Third down and six now. Delaware at the Marshall 18. Argentino to pass for the first time today. Passes complete for the first down to the 11-yard line. Johnson and it's Lanyu Johnson on the reception. Johnson out of the backfield. Again, that misdirection. Watch Bergantino. All the misdirection squats people. Bergantino looks for his back. Johnson, who finds a hole on the backside. Johnson is the best receiver of the Delaware backs. He's now got 26 catches on the year. Misdirection, that back out of the backfield. He gets lost. First and goal for Delaware at the six. Try the short side. And not a lot of running room for Lewis. Takes it down inside the four to possibly the three-yard line on first down. Johnson on the stop for the herd. Up front, coming right at you. Watch the guard pull, tackle, both guards pull it. Well, I'll tell you what, that gives you a little comfort zone. Lewis runs behind him. The two big guards out front. Tubby Raymond in his 27th year as the head football coach of the Delaware Blue Hens. Second and goal, Delaware at the Marshall three. 8.40 to go in a moving clock, first quarter. Here comes Landu. No, the handoff goes right up the middle. Awfully close to the goal line. Near the goal line. Let's check that Marshall defense. Up front, a good group. Garrett Durning Rhodes and Byron Litton is the top sack master of the herd. Linebackers William King, Shannon King, the top tackler, and Donahue Stevenson. And from this defensive secondary group, Roger Johnson is the best player at the free safety spot. I'll tell you what, Dave, you can get ruled awful easy. Bergantino gives to his pullback. Ten. Looked like he was coming out of there with it. But no, sir, the pullback's up inside with it. Tenth play of the opening drive for Delaware. Doesn't get there. No. Daryl Brown stopped shy of the goal line, and it's fourth down. This will be a most interesting call. Bergantino, the five Delaware quarterback, hands to his fullback. Brown tries to hit it up inside. Nowhere to go. Marshall, big, big up front that time. Nice stop by middle linebacker Shannon King. Fourth and goal, less than a yard from the goal line. And they're going for all of it. Bergantino over the top, a flag is down. And Marshall was offsides on the play. So this will be six big ones for Delaware. They'll refuse a penalty, certainly. At the bottom of the screen here. 
from ground level. Right there. Defense. Nothing All happens until the ball snaps. Penalty and force on the kickoff. And you heard the referee, L.V. McGinty. The touchdown by Bergantino is good. A one-yard touchdown plunge by the senior quarterback for the Delaware Blue Hands. And they draw first blood here at Marshall Stadium. And now Steve Leo is on to attempt the extra point. Leo had a string of 27 consecutive point after touchdowns. Snap versus Maine. And it's good. So Marshall gets a face full of the wing tee of the Delaware Blue Hens early. Delaware with a 7-0 first quarter lead in Huntington. Welcome back. We're live in our studios here at Channel 53. $210 today on our national semifinal between Delaware and Marshall. And I got to believe that a lot of you folks out there are watching at parties right now. And keep in mind, our goal is $2,500 on this game, but keep in mind, that it's the small public television station, it's the small television station in Huntington, it's the small TV station that pays the rights fees so that these producers can go out and get this truck, hire the talent, run the cable. If it weren't for TV stations carrying these games, you wouldn't see them on television. And you wouldn't have to drive all the way to Huntington to see this game today. I would imagine it's sold out. I can't imagine you were able to get a ticket this week. Maybe you were. I don't know, but a lot of you stayed home because you were calling all week long to make sure that we had this game. We want to thank again the Washington Times Sports Section, Steve Repture, for getting this program listed today. Thank you, Steve. And again, uh, we want to make sure that we raise enough money to have this back next year. Give us a call. We'll read your name on the air in support of Marshall Football, NCAA. NCAA 1AA semifinal game. And Troy Brown set to receive the kickoff for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Leo gets a good foot into this kick, and it drives Brown six yards deep in the end zone, and he'll have to down it there. That extra five yards always helps with a kickoff. That has not happened very often to Troy Brown in the Marshall Specials Teams unit, so the Herd will start first and ten from their 20-yard line. And Marshall started the game three and out. We'll see what the Thundering Herd comes up with this time. The thing you got to be careful about here, Dave, don't try to get it back in a hurry. Take your time. Make sure that you got the proper reads and you throw it where you want to. A little misread and it could go the wrong way. First and 10 for Marshall at the 20. One back set and Peyton to put it up. This will be his first pass attempt of the day. Pass is complete to Glenn Pedro. Fighting for yardage and he is stopped at the 25-yard line. A gain of five. Glenn Pedro, the big throwback coming out of the backfield. That one back set. Marshall likes to spread the field. And for Glenn Pedro... That is his 15th catch of the season. Michael Payton, boy, he likes to go to the back. Kind of a check down for him when he's covered outside. Three wide receivers this time. Wolf Brown is split out wide to the left. Troy Brown is a flanker to that side. Gets some heat. And Payton puts it up across the middle. Incomplete up at the 35-yard line. The pass was intended for Troy Brown, and Brian Quigg had the defense for the Blue Hens. And Bato was close. Certainly he was getting some heat. Right now, don't push the button. <laughs> 6.35 to go, first quarter. Delaware with a 7-0 lead in this NCAA 1AA semifinal matchup. The winner of this game will meet the winner of tonight's game, Youngstown State at Northern Iowa. A little bit of confusion here. And now Troy Brown is in, in the, the backfield. backfield. First time we've seen that this season. Third and five. Hit. What a shot from nowhere. Are they physical or what? Pat Mulhern came up from his linebacking spot and put the big hit on Michael Payton. And so Marshall Again, three and three out, out for the second time in the first quarter. Travis Colquick. And Anthony Ventresca set to receive the punt. Back at the Delaware 40-yard line. Oh, my. Short kick.
kick by Colt with sails out of bounds, and Delaware is going to have great field position. That was Shank City. 53 to go. First quarter, Delaware has a 7-0 lead, and they've got great field position. Okay, Delaware fans, you have the lead, and you also have a challenge. Uh, Joe Quigg from Ashburn, uh, he's a fan of the Blue Hens, and he challenges all other Blue Hens to phone us and pledge your support for Channel 53. So this is a challenge from Joe Quigg, so take on that challenge, Blue Hen fans, and give us a call right now. 560-3730. No other station is going to broadcast Delaware football, only this channel right here. So give us your support, because if you do, perhaps you'll see a lot more Delaware action in the near future. Also, a uh, Greg Stombaugh is a Delaware fan. He says, go Delaware. And uh, he's also going to get a, a dinner at Joe Thyssen's, a two-for-one coupon, and also he's going to get our magazine. And if you do charge $35, you'll get a two-for-one coupon for any one of four restaurants in this area, Ramparts, the Boston Beanery, Joe Thyssen's, our Grievies. And for 60, you'll get a tote bag. Plenty of good reasons for you to pledge your support because if you give to this station, we'll give back to you as well. So every time you call us with your support, talk to one of our operators about the specials that we have, and they'll tell you all about how you can support us. Thank you very much. Wrong with a Marshall offense early. Marshall just 13 total yards in two possessions at 13, an unlucky number. That's the number of yards that Travis Colquitt's recent punt traveled and that sets up the Delaware Blue Hens first and 10 at the Marshall 36 yard line. Bergantino, Bergantino keeps the ball keeps again it. on the quarterback shoot. <laughs> Charles McGregor comes up from his quarterback spot to put the hit on for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Okay. And while we've got a moment, we want to remind you that the announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by Marshall University and the NCAA. Any use rebroadcast or other transmission of this game without the written consent of the NCAA and creative productions is prohibited. Gain of six for Vergantino and second down and four. Delaware at the Marshall 31-yard line. Vergantino is the most dangerous in the Delaware backfield when he has the football. And Delaware has been a very quick starting team this season, outscoring their opponents in the first quarter, 87 to 17. Vergantino on the keeper. Takes a lick, but I believe he's got the first down to the Marshall 26-yard line. Shannon King delivered the hit on Vergantino. And along with William King. Watch Vergantino here. Reverses Delaware out. Has a first down at the 26 yard line. Just a little hitch there. Keeps the ball. Boy, when he gets just a little bit of a seam, he'll turn up inside every time. Here's the hitch. You got the defensive end upfield, and when you got that, I guarantee you the quarterback's going to keep the football and turn up field. A you can see good. Marshall coach Jim Donovan. He's got to be concerned at this point. First down and 10. 4.30 to go. First quarter. Delaware with the lead and moving the football. There's up the middle, it's Brown across the 20 into the 19-yard line. Byron Litton hanging on for dear life makes the tackle. All the things that you do, I'll tell you what, watch when you're looking at Bergantino right here, he gives to the fullback up the middle, but you've got all this misdirection back behind you. So you got the linebackers looking at the backs going different ways, to all of a sudden the fullback hits it right up the middle. Brown is only the ninth Delaware player to rush for 1,000 yards in a season in the first in 1988. Gain of second, se second down at three, and here comes Brown again. Across the 15 and down to the 14-yard line, and it's another Delaware first down. And what happens, Dave, once you get the linebackers or your defensive ends back on their heels with the misdirection, then you hit them with a pullback on a quick hitter. And you can see it right here. Excellent block up front. Boy, the guard influences there, and boy, you hit it up in there. As I say, right now, the Marshall defense, they're on their heels. Mickey Matthews, the defensive coordinator, and his group of Marshall Thundering Herd defensive specialists looking for answers. Bergantino lets it go. The pass is nearly picked off by Roger Johnson at the five-yard line. It was intended over there for the big tight end, Tom Fitzpatrick. And Johnson made an excellent play on Fitzpatrick that time as he runs across the pass. Again, watch Bergantino, the Delaware quarterback. Great shot of him. Look at all the misdirection. Now you look for the big tight end. Johnson's right over the top. Makes a big, big play on Fitzpatrick. Roger Johnson, 
a converted running back from Lynchburg, Virginia. Last year, he was the Southern Conference Defensive Freshman of the Year. Second and ten for Delaware. Bergantino still has the football. Late pitch and nowhere to go. Stacked up by a host of Marshall tacklers at the 17-yard line is Anthony Ventresco. Bergantino would like to have that one back again. Had nowhere to go with the football. Forced to pitch. Watch the misdirection here. There's a miss. Johnson runs into it. All he wants to do is get rid of the football. Fifth year senior Byron Litton from Parkersburg South High School in West Virginia made the play. Third and 13 now for Delaware. Bergantino lets it go. Pass is intercepted. Shannon Morrison with the pickoff for the Marshall Thundering Herd. And Bergantino is slow to get up. You the defense stands tall but Delaware continues to lead 7-0 Glenn Pedro to the short side across the 10 and knocked out of bounds at the 11 that's a 4 yard gain down to the sidelines in our Mark Martin all right, thank you very much, Dave. I'm joined by Mr. Al Benson, the commissioner of the Yankee Conference. And as you said just a moment ago, this is a fast football game. This is a great football game. I love that score. The score is beautiful. It's going to be that way for the rest of the game. What does this mean to a conference having a team reach this point of the postseason playoff? It means everything. I mean, it just proves that the conference is a good conference. They have a good program, good schools, good team. It's really, it's a lot of exposure. It helps for recruiting. It helps for the teams that aren't even here. What's Tubby Raymond meant? to this conference. Tubby is uh, the dean, and Tubby is, uh, you almost say that he's a role model for all of our coaches. He's quite a man. All right, Al, thank you for being with us. Good luck the rest of the game. Thanks, Mark. All right, let's get back upstairs to Dave and Sonny. Thanks, Mark. And the commission of the Yankee Conference Hall smiles thus far. Michael Payton carries it up to the 15-yard line. It's going to be third down and short. Michael Payton, straight drop back. Almost falls. Does a heck of a job to stay on his feet. That's some athletic ability. Then they flush him. When he flushes, he's most dangerous. Gets knocked out of bounds. Third to bat one. This is Marshall's third possession of the game. The Thundering Herd looking for their first first down of the afternoon. Glenn Pedro is the lone setback behind quarterback Michael Payton. Payton to put it up on third and short. In and out of the hands of Ricky Carter at the 19-yard line. The freshman from Lynchburg just let that one slip through the wickets. He had the first down. Take your eye off of it just for a split second. A lot of times that's what's going to happen. Ricky Carter wanting to run with the football before he caught it. So Travis Colquitt comes on. His last punt traveled just 13 yards. Anthony Ventresco set to return it near the midfield stripe for the Delaware Blue Hens. Now he got all this one. Much better kick this time. Ventresca calls for the fair catch at the Delaware 45-yard line. So Delaware has excellent field position. And we'd like to take a moment to thank Stewart's Hot Dog of Huntington for today's crew meal. Stewart's serving the Huntington area since 1932, owned and operated by four generations of the Mann family. So in the battle of field position early on, Sonny, it's been all Delaware. They've got the upper hand here early. Bergantino under center. Put it up. Pass is caught into Marshall territory at the 43-yard line. That's and the exact same play, Dave, that they ran down close to the goal line. Pass is completed to the tight end, Tom Fitzpatrick. Bergantino, excellent coverage downfield. Fitzpatrick in front of Morrison just comes up with a play. Shannon Morrison was the closest defender. Fitzpatrick, he's a big guy. They haven't used him often this season. That's just his ninth catch of the year. First and ten. A minute 59 to go. First quarter. A quarter dominated by the Delaware Blue Hens. And 
handoff. Lanyu Johnson bounces outside. Knocked out of bounds by Charles McGregor, but not before he's got another Delaware first down at the 31-yard line. Again, that misdirection has given Marshall Fitz defensively. Bergantino, the trigger man, pulled both guards. Johnson bounces outside. And if it's not for McGregor, it's going to go a long ways further. Johnson, a 5'10 running back. Excellent speed and quickness. Tommy Raymond. Ted Kempson, the offensive coordinator. They look on. Hand off up the middle. Brown pops up the football. And Marshall's Donahue Stevenson makes the recovery at the 20-yard line. That's the first time we've seen in a long time where the player just fell on the ball, didn't try to pick it up and run with it. Donahue Stevenson from Fort Lauderdale makes the recovery. Excellent yardage. Stripped by Keenan Rhodes. Watch Donahue Stevenson. Falls right on the ball. He said, we'll take it at the 20. Ball's caught up. Donahue Stevenson not going to try to get fancy with it. Excellent play by the big linebacker. Donahue Stevenson makes the recovery for the Marshall Thundering Herd. So Delaware with two first quarter turnovers in Marshall territory. Peyton to put it up on first down. Across the middle, in and out of the hands of Troy Brown and nearly picked off at the 25-yard line. Tim Jacobs, the right cornerback, nearly got his hands on the football. Michael Peyton on his seven-step drop. Looking for Troy Brown. Who else? You can see the ball tip, almost picked off. Pat Mulhern knocked the football away from Troy Brown. Tim Jacobs was there, almost to get off the turf. Second down and 10. Marshall still looking for their first first down of the game. This is their fourth possession, and Peyton to pass again. Nowhere to go with him. On the backside, ball is loose. Ball still loose. Johnny McKee falls on the ball. And Marshall's big Johnny McKee able to get a hold of the football. Peyton had it stripped from behind. They'll and have, early on, Sonny, this Delaware defense coming up big. They'll have to replace that ball. I guarantee you there's no air left in that one. Michael Peyton, nowhere to go. That's a great coverage sack from the backside. Matt, Matt Morrow. Morrow. Morrow's the one that causes uh, Peyton to put it on the ground. Marshall will go with dual tight ends now on third and 24. That's one of the best matchups of today's game, Sonny. Johnny McKee trying to protect Michael Payton blindside and trying to stop right end Matt Morrill, a Kodak 1AA All-American. Inside of a minute to go, first quarter. Marshall would like to get some of it back. Payton on the play action. Look out for the backside. Delaware in hot pursuit. Bartram's got it, but it'll be brought down far short of the first down, but he does get it out to the 16-yard line. Again, you get some of it back. You don't try to get it all. Payton was getting an awful lot of pressure from the backside. You know, Sonny, no one double-A football team has held Marshall with less than 450 total yards. Watch Michael Payton to the big tight end. Marshall. Marshall gets the ball, gets what he gets all he can get. As I say, get some of it back, but Marshall is still forced to kick it out of there. But we're going to see the first quarter come to an end. And Travis Colquitt allows the clock to expire, and we have come to the end of the first 15 minutes of play. The first quarter is in the books, and the Delaware Blue Hands, the champions of the Yankee Conference, looking very, very strong in Huntington. Back with more in just a moment from Huntington. Welcome back to Huntington, West Virginia. The semifinals of the NCAA 1AA playoffs. Delaware with a 7-0 lead over the Marshall Thundering Herd. Delaware holding Marshall without a first down in the first quarter. And Travis Colquitt set to punt the football again. Line drive. That takes a healthy roll for the Herd. Van Truska picks it up at the 34-yard line. And he is immediately collared by George Thomas. Great coverage by the Marshalls. Special teams. Ventresca did a good job, Sonny, by fielding that punt. Otherwise, he's going to lose another 15 yards. Very heads up play. Ventresca might have been a little face pass there. Oh, yes. You caught it, Sonny. That's one that got away from him. 
Bill Bergantino, he holds 24 Delaware career passing records. And off right up the middle to Brown. To the 38-yard line. That's a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. And you know what's really amazing about that? Brown's the one that coughs the ball up. Matt Ward, you're talking about dominating on the ground. That's all you have to do is look at the screen. That wing T working. But Graham coughed the ball up, but right away they come right back to him. That's a lot of confidence uh, they show in their fullback. Delaware would be up in this game more than 7 nothing, but they've committed two turnovers in Marshall territory already. One more time with a wing T. Bergantino keeps it, looks across the middle, in and out of the hands of the split end. Dan Cooper, incomplete. Right here, I'll tell you one thing. You're talking about linebackers on their heels. You can have defensive backs, too. Watch Bergantino here. Look at all the misdirection. You pull two guards. Bergantino's out on the wing. Now looking for the deep cross attack. Had the tight end wide open. Just over through the ball with Tan there. Third down and six for Delaware. Coach Dowden, you can understand his concern. Shy the first down at the 44-yard line. He's close to the first down marker, but he's a yard shy. And Delaware forced to punt for the first time today. Little delay draw here. It's almost like a sprint draw. Sprint counter. Pull a guard. Almost enough, but about a yard short. Brian Myers, a junior from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, averaging 38 yards per punt, is in the game. And Troy Brown set the receiver for the Thundering Herd at the Marshall 20. He's going to get a chance. Five. Brown has it and is immediately swarmed under by a host of Delaware Blue Hen tacklers. 13-26 to go in the first half. Delaware with a 7-0 lead over the Marshall Thundering Herd session of the afternoon. Marshall still looking for their initial first down. Mike Bartram, the tight end in motion. Pitch. Chris Parker, the freshman from Lynchburg. He finds some running room. Shoots across the 30 and is up to the 34-yard line for a gain of eight. Chris Parker with an eight-yard gain playing in place of Orlando Hatchet, who sustained a concussion in last week's game against Middle Tennessee State. Nothing but the top sweep. Glenn Pedro, the big fullback, gets an excellent block up front. Cuts down, gets the tight end, I mean, the defensive end hook. Parker gets excellent yardage as he cuts it up inside. Pedro with a nice block on the right tackle, Scott Pondru. Very, very un-Michael Payton-like numbers early on. Here comes Parker again. And he is stopped shy in the line of scrimmage. Toss sweep, the exact same play. The strong safety Brian Quigg came up on run support for Delaware. And it's third and two. Again, the toss sweep to the near side. Not a whole lot of room. Tim Jacobs, the quarterback, the one that cuts it back up inside, makes the stop. Tim Jacobs, first defensive back to be a four-year starter at Delaware. Third down and two. Payton to put it up. Looking for the throwback. Across the middle to flip to Troy Brown, and Marshall's got their first first down of the afternoon. And Troy Brown with his 86th catch of the season. Again, Michael Payton sprints to the wide side. Looking to the back side for Troy Brown, who runs across the pattern. Right from ground level here as the defensive backs look at it. Troy Brown catches it underneath the coverage. Linebacker Chris Johnson makes the stop for Delaware. First and ten for the Thundering Herd from the Marshall 44. Peyton across the middle, complete to Troy Brown. To the Delaware 39-yard line. And now Marshall beginning to move the football for the first time this afternoon. Michael Peyton getting time when he sets his feet. The seven-step drop. Looks back to Troy Brown, who runs a big curl into the seam. Delaware 39. And the chains move again. 
gain of 17 yards on Troy the Troy Brown, Mr. Excitement. Michael Payton now over 9,000 yards passing in his outstanding career at Marshall University. First and 10. Reverse. Hand off. Chris Parker up inside to the 37-yard line. Not much running room between the tackles. So. Well, I'll tell you what, Delaware yeah. early has been awfully stout down inside. Very physical also, I might mention. This Delaware defense is beginning up over 200 yards per game passing, but not many teams have had a lot of success running the football against the Blue Hens. Just a gain of two, second down and eight. Marshall at the Delaware 37. Now we get the little heat. Payton, Barker had it and ball. dropped it. And you won't see that very often. I'll tell you what, he's as good a tight end as I've seen in a long, long time. Took his eye off of it just for a moment. Just a split second. Michael Payton sets his feet. Mike Bartram had the ball for a split second, and it gets away from him. And the ball was thrown just a bit behind him, but Mike he Bartram... He catches those, not an average under the tag. Mike Bartram would be the first guy to say, Sonny, he should have had that one. Third down and eight. Delaware tried to bring some heat, but they did not get to Payton. Marshall moving with the wind in the second quarter, and Matt Morrow drags down Michael Payton all the way back at the Thundering Herd 46-yard line. The best drive Marshall's had, and if Bartram hangs on to the ball, the chains are still moving. Big, big play by Matt Morrow. The bottom part of your screen. Marl is all over Michael Payton, the Marshall quarterback. Junior from this Hannock Station, New Jersey. Travis Colquick's getting the work out here early. He certainly is. Oh, he hit this one. What a punt. Oh, out of sight. A 56-yard punt that sails through the end zone. Delaware will have the football at the 20-yard line. When we return to Huntington, 9.55 to go first half. Delaware 7, Marshall nothing. Sailed like a rocket off the foot of Marshall punter Travis Colquitt. And when this came down, David, it had some snow and ice on it. A 54-yard punt. Delaware's got the football at the 20-yard line. Bergantino on the keeper, and he is brought down in the backfield by Rodney Garrett, Jr. from Sussex, Virginia. Bergantino keeps the ball. Rodney Garrett stays at home. Little counter action. The quarterback with the ball. Rodney Garrett deep as the ball. Big, big play by Rodney Garrett. Loss of six. Great penetration by the Marshall defensive front. Bergantino with 25 yards, with 23 yards rather, on the ground thus far. Handoff goes right up the middle to Darrell Brown, and he doesn't find much running room. Across the 15, up to about the 17-yard line for a gain of three. It'll be third down and long for Delaware. Watch Bragantino here. He's like a magician with the football. Hands one more, hands to the back. Brown up inside. He's tough at quarterback, I promise you. This Bergantino is giving our camera crews a real workout today. Third and a dozen at the 18. Reverse. Inside handoff. And staying home to make the stop for the Marshall Thundering Herd is William King on Anthony Ventresca. Officer Donahue Stevenson stays home. When you're as deep as the ball, the reverse will not hurt you. Brian Myers into attempt his second punt of the first half. And we've got an official timeout momentarily down on the field. Delaware 7, Marshall nothing. Eight minutes to go in the first half. Troy Brown looks on. And the Delaware defense has really been the story thus far in the first half, Sonny. They've been able to contain that high-powered offense of Marshall. Myers, line drive, dangerous That's kick. the one you like to return. Troy Brown from the 50-yard line. Great coverage. Swarmed under. Loss of one on the punt return. Marshall's got the football in great field position at their 49-yard line. We'll be back with more in just a moment.
momentarily with a Marshall offensive unit on the field. First and 10 from their own 49-yard line. Delaware in front 7-0. Here comes Glenn Pedro. Slashing his way to the Delaware 46 for a gain of five. Right now, they just want to pound it. Get that positive yardage. The second quarter has been the most prolific scoring quarter of the year for the Marshall Thundering Herd. In 13 games, they put 180 points on the board. Peyton's numbers improving a bit. Now four of eight for 42 yards and one INT. Play fake to Pedro. Pass is caught out of bounds. Troy Brown first down at the Delaware 36 yard line. Let's head down to the sidelines in our Mark Martin. Thank you very much, Dave. The storyline heading the list, obviously, Delaware's defense thus far, and a guy playing on the defensive line for Delaware once here at Marshall. Dominique Botto walked on under George Chomp in 1989, but then Jim Donnan's staff came in in the spring of 90. They wanted him to play center and not defense. He chose to move closer to home and play at Delaware. This is a big game for that young man, David. And the Delaware defensive front playing very, very strong with Botto in there at one defensive end position. Hand off, Glenn Pedro short side avoids one tackler and driven out of bounds at the 36 yard line for no gain. Today's NCAA 1AA semifinal game is brought to you in part by Sports South. Tell you one thing, Dave, Delaware right now is not doing a whole lot up front defensively. Very, very basic right now. And more than holding the roll. No gain on the play, second down and 10. Three wide receivers for Marshall. Troy Brown is to the short side. Will Brown is to the left side with Ricky Carter, a flanker to the left. Two deep zone. Complete. Mike Bartram's got a lot of room. Carries it down to the 20-yard line for a gain of 16. Bartram. And we'd like to welcome the other members of the Marshall Thundering Herd Sports Network today. WOAY, Oak Hill, West Virginia. WNBC, Falls Church, Virginia. Sports South, Sports Channel, Ohio. And TCI Cablevision in Newcastle County, Delaware. Michael Payton sets his feet. The big tight end, Mike Bartram, to the far side. He is wide, wide open. Delaware was in a two-deep zone. They let the big tight end run the square out pattern. And, of course, we can't forget the flagship station of the Thundering Herd Sports Network, WCHS, Charleston, Huntington, West Virginia. And Michael Payton with the completion to Ricky Carter down to the six-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Thundering Herd. Michael Payton on the sprint. Rolls to his right. Ricky Carter, just a scrap, Patrick. They're taking right now what the Delaware defense has given them. Andy Bowen from Huntington, West Virginia, checks into the lineup for the first time today with the play from the sideline. And Marshall trying to drive for the tying touchdown. Bowen splits to the short side, to the right. Payton to put it up. Screen pass to Troy Brown, trying to turn the corner. Can't do it. A lose one man inside the five. And forward progress to the floor. Troy Brown, the senior from Blackville, South Carolina. Is he elusive or what? Well, Marshall's outstanding back. Orlando Hatchet out with that cut concussion. So they put Troy Brown where else in the backfield. Here they just run a little screen to him. They'll get the ball in his hands any way that they can. And after you watch this move, you can understand why. Delaware keeping everything in front of him now. Scott Acker with the stop for Delaware. From the eye this time, Parker is the tailback. Second and goal at the four. Here comes Chris Parker to the goal line. They're marking at the one. Chris Parker just went airborne behind the big offensive line. Watch Chris Parker here. Airborne, down to the one. will exit momentarily and Glenn Pedro also coming out of the lineup third and goal at the Delaware one Delaware leading seven nothing this is the NCAA one double a semifinals and big Johnny McKee at 330 pounds is in the backfield and Johnny McKee's got the football and a touchdown touchdown Johnny McKee his fourth rushing touchdown of the year touchdown Marshall thundering her hard to believe he could go in the NCAA 
so uncut. As big as he is. Watch Johnny McCain. 300 plus to the left side. He actually walks in. Wide McIntyre, the closest defensive, defensive back. Look at that. Six rushes, five touchdowns, and the other carry was for a first down. David Merrick, the sophomore from Worthington, Ohio, the left footer, into attempt the extra point. And the Marshall Thundering Herd have tied this game. 4.05 to go in the first half. Marshall draws even with the Blue Hens of Delaware. Half. Marshall getting into the end zone for the first time this afternoon. Seven play drive, 51 yards. And Johnny McKee. 330 pounds, busting his way into pay dirt. Willie Merrick, the older brother of place kicker David Merrick, in to kick the football away. Williams and Ventresca set to return the kick for Delaware. This will be Ventresca from the two. Ventresca, tough running. Great individual effort. Watch Johnny McKee here. 300 pounds plus. I won't put the final number on him. He just falls down. I don't think anybody wanted any piece of him. Offsides on Marshall on the kickoff. And we'll see if the Blue Hens elect to have Marshall kick it again, and that appears to be the case. Penalizing five yards, three kick. L.V. McGinty, our referee today. The thing that happens here, Dave, on special teams, and the reason you'd like for them to kick it again, those guys get tired kicking the, you know, when they kick off. The kickoff team having to cover. Well, if they're a little bit tired, then I guarantee you one thing, gives you an opportunity to have that seam a little bigger when you try to return it the next time. Here's a look at our officiating crew this afternoon from the Ohio Valley Conference. Marshall 7, Delaware 7. Four minutes to go in the first half. A hard-hitting battle in the NCAA 1AA semifinals. And Petresca will try again, this time from the six. That's a burrow. Battling his way, burrowing, in fact, all the way up to the 30-yard line, and that's where Delaware will start first and 10. Ben Tresca getting the extra tough yardage. Puts Delaware, him in decent field position. Delaware scored first in this game. Bill Bergantino with a one-yard touchdown run in the first quarter, and Marshall tied it moments ago. Johnny McKee with a one-yard touchdown plunge for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Magician at quarterback. Bergantino, quick shot across the middle, incomplete. Dropped at the 39-yard line by Dan Cooper, the split end. Roger Johnson had the coverage for Marshall. Watch Shannon King in Bergantino's face. Watch right there. But that ball should have been caught. Just a slap pattern. First down is so important for that wing T offense, Sonny. You want to get something going on first down because this ground-oriented attack, you don't want to be forced to put it up unless you want to. Pull back. Hand up. Hand up right up the middle. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line goes Darrell Brown. And Byron Litton and company bring him down. Marshall not doing anything passing. Their folks stand at home now. Misdirection. Not nearly as effective. A little bit of a blitz here, but when you stay at home, you can make the play. Darrell Brown, eight carries, 28 yards thus far for the Delaware Blue Hen. Third down and nine. And the Marshall fans get behind their defense. Bergantino, passed up by Keenan Rhodes. That was a fumble on the play. But I believe they're going to blow it down. Keenan Rhodes, the senior from Los Angeles. 
Bergantino just keeps the ball. This is a spread all the way. Looks like a quarterback keep. Watch the ball pop out here. They're going to say the ground forced the ball to come out, which it did. Ball's blown dead at the 30. Now Marshall coach Jim Donnan out on the field speaking with the referee. Marshall has been charged with a timeout. Well, in order to talk to the referee, you've got to use one of your timeouts. And Coach Donnan said it would be worth it this particular occasion. I'm not sure if Jim Donnan was upset about the fact that Marshall has been charged with a timeout or the fact that some time ran off the clock after Marshall tried to get a timeout. Let's check other scores from around the nation today on our Budweiser scoreboard. From the NFL, Buffalo with a 7-0 lead over Denver. The Bills trying to snap a two-game slide. Denver without quarterback John Elway again this afternoon. Broncos need a win or their mark will drop to 7-7. Seven and seven. Buffalo in the hunt for home field advantage in the AFC playoffs. set to punt again for the Delaware Blue Hens. Good kick. Troy Brown calls for the fair catch. At the 37-yard line. So, Youngstown State and Northern Iowa from the Mini Dome. The winner of that game meets the winner of this game next week right here at Marshall Stadium in the NCAA 1AA Championship game. I would think Marshall would like to move into her and in the air. Troy Brown is a flanker to the right side on first down. Peyton to put it up. Complete Ricky Carter. Near the first down at the Marshall 47-yard line. It may be close enough to measure. And right now, Delaware is keeping everything in front of them. But I tell you what, when you give them 10 or 12 of the shot, you can keep them underneath. Marshall. Just Ricky Carter catching the football. Running that square out pattern. He'll take 12 or 14 of the crack. Ricky Carter, a true freshman from Lynchburg, Virginia, really came into his own after Will Brown had to leave the starting lineup with a shoulder separation. Carter's got over 30 catches now on the season. Now a little heat. Turns the corner. And out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Give the elusive senior quarterback from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, a one-yard gain. Excellent job just to get back to the line of scrimmage. A little look right here to Michael Payton as we see him from the backside. Sets up. Nowhere to go with it. Pulls it down. He'll take what he can get and get out of bounds. Michael Payton. Otto runs him out. Michael Payton is a semifinalist for the Walter Payton Award that will be awarded Monday in New York. The award goes to the top football player in 1AA football. Second down and Peyton to pass once again. They try to set up the screen to Troy Brown and Delaware snuffs it out. For a loss back at the 45-yard line. That's a loss of three. They love to get the ball in Troy Brown's hands. Loss of two on the completion. Michael Third Peyton down. in negative territory as far as rushing the football is concerned. Shot of Troy Brown being bent over here. Don't have to tell you what that would mean to the Marshall offense and defense. Mark Rubar with the hit on Troy Brown. Looks like his shoulder. Javi Perez, the Marshall trainer. Third and a dozen. 90 seconds to go in the first half. The protection is good for Peyton. The pass is tipped and nearly caught by the tight end, Mike Barger, but it falls incomplete, and Marshall will have to punt the football. Mike Bandish. The linebacker was right there with Marshall, had excellent coverage. Watch Michael Payton here. He's getting some pressure from the backside. Looking for the big tight end. Bandis right there. We see the ball tip. It's kind of in your face. Colquitt is the Marshall punter. Colquitt, he brought ice and snow the last time. See what he brings this trip. Clock stopped with 91 seconds to go in the first half. Delaware set to receive the football off the punt by Travis Colquitt. Van Tresca from the 10-yard line. And 
and George Thomas will ride him out of bounds. Face mask. And a flag is down. You called it, Sonny. Face mask pen penalty pending against the Marshall Thundering Herd. When Delaware finally takes possession, they'll have all three of their timeouts. Right here, it's very easy to see the face mask as he's being ripped out of bounds. It's just whether it's going to be 5 or 15. And that will nullify an excellent punt by Travis Colquitt. Grabbing a face mask, 15 yards. That's the big one. You can take him down, but you can't use the face mask. Michael Payton with yet another Southern Conference career passing attempt record. Has not been real, real sharp here this afternoon. But I'll tell you one thing, Delaware's defense has had a whole lot to do with that. Payton now holds practically every Southern Conference passing record out on the board, including passes attempted, passing yards, touchdown passes, passes completed, and total offense. Bergantino with nowhere to go. And it's Rodney Garrett throwing him to the turf. Rodney Garrett's been awfully big here early. Bergantino reverses out, starts down the line. I'll tell you what, when you get that much penetration, you're going to make the play defensively. Sonny Delaware opting not to use their timeouts. We're down to 50 seconds on a moving clock. And if Marshall stops them here, they're going to call timeout. You can read the signals from Jim Dunnan on the Marshall sideline. If Marshall comes up with a defensive stand here, they will call timeout. Bergantino intercepted Shannon Morrison. His second interception of the first half. Bergantino threw the ball back behind the receiver. Shannon Morrison comes up with a big, big interception. The sophomore from Oak Hill comes up big. Bergantino would like to have this one back. Shannon Morrison right there to make the play. And with 36 seconds left here in the first half, that's an eternity for Michael Payton. Bergantino was trying to get the football to Anthony Ventresca, but Shannon Morrison stepped in the passing lane and came up with the interception. First and 10 for the Thundering Herd at the Delaware 39. Too tall for Ricky Carter. And a late hit. What they said is he hit him after the ball went over his head. Late hit being whistled on Mike Bandish, the middle linebacker of the Delaware Blue Hens. What's Mike Bandish here? Well, the ball sails way over his head. Really not a catchable ball. Watch the hit here. Just to the left of the screen. Now we'll see it. You got a dead ball, personal foul against the defense, 15 yards, first down. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a big one. That's a big one. But I want a little better shot than that for 15. That was just a tap in the back. Marshall moving with the wind here in the second quarter. This 15-yard mark off will move the Thundering Herd into field goal range. We're tied at seven with just 32 ticks left in the first half. Marshall seven, Delaware seven. Tubby Raymond, the legend from Delaware, not real, real excited. Excited inside, but not any outward emotion. He's a legend, no question about it. Peyton's numbers beginning to improve. Hot shot, caught by Ricky Carter to the 21-yard line for a short gain. And, and now Marshall will call timeout. And if he doesn't juggle the ball, he might go a long ways. Peyton with a quick release. Michael Peyton to Ricky Carter. All alone. The juggling act, it gives the... Delaware defenders, time to get there. Tim, Tim Jacobs. Jacobs, the first one there. There you can see in the gray sweatshirt, that is Marshall Offensive Coordinator Greg Briner. Speaking with Michael Payton and Mike Bartram on the sideline. 
Marshall did not pick up a first down until the second quarter, but here in the second period of play, the Marshall offense beginning to move the football a bit better. If you're Marshall, you want at least three. If you're Delaware, you want to keep them off the board. Carter's been a big part of the offense in the first half of the Marshall Thundering Herd. Michael Payton showing no effects from that bruised knee he suffered last week against Middle Tennessee State. Delaware came on a blitz the last time the ball was snapped. Second down and seven. And Marshall will go from the shotgun, shotgun. for the first time today. Well, it wasn't a play clock, I can assure you that. Got a schedule, false start on the offense, five yards to the replay second down. And that's costly when you're talking about field goal. There's Tubby Raymond. Watch the offensive line here. Tackle to the right of your screen, move just a tad. You don't have to move a whole lot, and you'll draw the flag. Johnny McKee, the left tackle, whistled for five yards, illegal procedure, second down and 12 now from the 26, and again, Peyton from the shotgun. Getting flushed, nowhere to go. And dragged out of bounds at the 30-yard line. And that looked like a face pass. Scott Hondrew makes the stop for Delaware. 15 seconds left in the first half. Watch Hondrew here. I'll tell you what, no, it wasn't quite a face pass. Back of the collar. Michael Payton running for his life. Drags him down with a big left hand. They gave him some heat. Hondrew brings Payton to the ground with authority. Not sure what that... Marco. Marco in a Santa Claus motif. Today. Yeah, and he's got the blue hens. They're whistling them around. Hey, and speaking of mascots, Tubby Raven's son is the Philly fanatic. Third and 17. Draw. Hand off up the middle to Pedro on the draw. And he is stopped shy of the 30-yard line. And Marshall will burn its final timeout with nine seconds to go. And we're looking at a 40 seven-yard field goal. And David Merrick, the sophomore from Worthington, Ohio, between the 40 and the 49-yard line this season, two of five. Merrick is 12 of 17 in field goal tries this year. From the shotgun, a little hand back to the big pullback. Who gets a little, but not quite enough. 47. The kick will come from the right hash mark for the left-footed Merrick. 47 is a pretty good shot for anybody. I would say this is right at David Merrick's limit. Marshall 7, Delaware 7. Nine seconds to go in the first half. This is the semifinals of the NCAA 1AA playoffs. And if you'd have told me it was going to be 7-7 seven to seven at halftime, I would have said you've been in the sun too long. <laughs> An overcast day in Huntington, West Virginia. The lights are on here at Marshall Stadium. A crowd estimated between 16 and 17,000 on hand for this big playoff game. Andy Bowen is the holder. No, had the distance. No good to the right. Just a little. And so that Delaware defense stands tall. unit will come onto the field now and just run out the clock and both teams will head back to the locker room. This has been a very hard-hitting competitive first half of play, Sonny. These folks have gotten after it here. Another look at the field goal. That left-footed kicker. Watch his hook. The hook on. Football. That's the end. Awfully close. It did not miss by much. So the first half is over. And the Delaware Blue Hens and the Marshall Thundering Herd head back to the locker room to make adjustments for the second half of play. And this one has been as advertised. A very, very tight game. Momentarily, we'll be joined by Mark Martin. We'll have a word with the head football coach of the Delaware Blue Hens, Tubby Raymond. Raymond, 27 years at Delaware. 
he's received a lot of national attention this year on NBC Nightly News and Sports Illustrated for the fact that he's a amateur painter. He paints a portrait each week of one of his senior players. Down to the sidelines for Mark and Tubby. Chris, you like to paint pictures. How do you paint this one here in the first half? Well, we gave away a couple scoring opportunities and didn't uh, capitalize on them, and then we turned the ball over twice, and uh, that's really the story. It's been a good-looking ball game. I hope we start playing the second half. All right, good luck, Tubby, in the second half. All right, let's go back upstairs to Dave and Sonny. Thanks, Mark. And a concerned coach of the Blue Hens of Delaware heads back to the locker room to discuss changes for the second half. We're at the break. Marshall 7, Delaware 7. Our halftime activities coming straight ahead. Football by both teams. Maybe the key to the first half, Sonny, two first quarter turnovers by the Delaware Blue Hens in Marshall territory. Marshall in the first half just one yard rushing the football. Well, Dave, you know, uh, I said at the outset that they might be just a little cautious. Uh, you know, one more step and you're in the championship game. Um, I'm not sure whether they're cautious or whether they're planted close to the vest. Uh, in most cases, Delaware is the one that always makes his, uh, their opponent turn the ball over. This afternoon, that hadn't happened. Delaware has turned over, and that's very uncharacteristic of the Delaware Blue Hens. We're seeing two great quarterbacks this afternoon. Michael Payton can throw the football all over the lot, but Bill Vergentino running the attack, that wing tee attack for Delaware, he's a magician, and especially in the first quarter of this game, that wing tee was giving Marshall all kinds of trouble. Well, you know, you've got your scout squad that runs it during the weekend. It looks one way, and then all of a sudden, boy, when you look at it for real on Saturday afternoon, now it looks entirely different to you. And I think uh, they were back on the heels early. Marshall was early, and once they got a look at it and settled down, uh, I don't think the misdirection has bothered them nearly as much. Um, they're going to get after it. <laughs> they certainly have here the first 30, and I guarantee you the second 30 is going to be just as tough. That Delaware defense held Marshall without a first down in the first half, but I think, Sonny, at this point, it's anybody's ball game. I guarantee you, brother. Don't go anywhere. This one's not over. All right, Mark Martin has our halftime report straight ahead. We're at halftime, tied at 7. In its third semifinal game, trying to make it 3-0, and and the University of Delaware playing in its fifth. The Blue Hens, through the years, are 4-0. and And back through the week, says our 1AA football coverage, we have been reliving the past of great moments, great games in the 1AA playoffs. We go back to a year ago here in Huntington for this week's feature. December 7th, 1991, Marshall meets Northern Iowa in the second round of the 1AA playoffs, a game that could very well be remembered as the Michael Payton and Brian Dower show. The herd strikes early when Payton hits Dower from 49 yards away with just 50 seconds played in the game. The herd would not trail the rest of the way. Payton finishes the contest with 344 yards passing, completing 21 of 27 attempts. With the score of 14-10 and still in the first quarter, Peyton and Dower hook up again, this time on a 60-yard pass play with 136 remaining. The two would also connect again on a score later in the game. Peyton's completion percentage of 77.8 establishes a 1AA playoff record for a single game, while Dower's three touchdown receptions set the new school record of 13 for a single season. Marshall goes on to roll 41-13 and advance to the next round of the postseason. And who can forget Michael Payton and Brian Dower, two of the great performances in the history of the NCAA 1AA football playoff. All right, and Michael Payton playing here today for Marshall. Brian Dower, now a graduate assistant with the Thundering Herd. It is an excellent football game. Marshall and Delaware playing for the first time since 1960. And coming up here at the half, we'll be talking with Mr. Benny Hollis, who will be the game director for next week's national championship contest. That comes your way from Huntington in just a moment, 7-7 at the half. Uh, yesterday, talking about that prior to their Cotton Bowl matchup, but uh, the 1AA football playoffs have been very successful. It certainly has, and we've grown by leaps and bounds since 1986. 1987, we went to Pocatello, Idaho, and it was a terrific bid. They did a good job there. People said, why do you go to Pocatello? We went because that was the only uh, city that bid on the championship. In 1989, we go down to Georgia Southern, Statesboro, Savannah. They did a terrific job. Now we're coming to uh, Huntington next week, three-year contract. We're working with the people. Lee Moon and him have done a great job in putting this thing together. This is a premier facility. I, I've been in this business a long time, seen a lot of football facilities. I am really impressed with this facility, and we're going to have a great championship next Saturday chance to plug your athletic program there at Northeast Louisiana. Great success through the years in all sports. 
Well, certainly we are very proud of our football program. Uh, we had a good team this year, Mark. Uh, we just didn't play very well. I think Delaware is a lot better team than they get credit for. Got a couple of quarterbacks hurt, and uh, that certainly hurt us. Uh, certainly we are proud of Stan Humphreys and his success in this particular area. Bubby Brister, quarterback at uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, is uh, we've had a, a real good successive uh, success with quarterbacks at our place. We, our basketball program has been one of the most successful in the country. We've had 33 out of the last 34 years of winning seasons in basketball. Been to the NCAA tournament the last three years in a row. So we're proud of our program. All right, Benny. Pleasure having you with us. Enjoy your stay in Huntington uh, this weekend and next. Thank you very much, Mark. All right, Mr. Benny Hollis, the chairman of the NCAA 1AA football committee, joining me here at half. Good football game underway. 7-7. We'll be back with more in a moment. Okay, hi, welcome back to Channel 53 Studios. I'm Brett Carlson, and right now is a perfect opportunity for you to call us at 560-3730 and pledge your support for public TV. We have different levels uh, here at the station that you can find out about. Here we are right on your screen. You know, when you give $120 or $90, it might seem like a lot. When you break it down, it's so little. Uh, $120, you'll see right here, $10 a month, only 33 cents a day. $90 for the year, $7.50 a month, only 25 cents a day. $60, $35, you see it right there in front of you, only pennies a day. You know, in one week, with the $120 uh, level, you can pay the same amount for a whole week of great programming as you do for a Big Mac. I mean, it's as simple as that. As Ross Perot said, off the key, but uh, hopefully we made some adjustments and we can come back out here and play our ball game. All right, good luck in the second half, Jim. All right, let's go back upstairs now to Day Weekly and uh, Sonny Randall. All right, thank you very much, Mark, and good job on the halftime report today. And we're all knotted at 7, Marshall 7, and Delaware 7, and momentum will be key early in the third quarter, Sonny. And once again, we talked about it last week, the first possession of the second half is always very, very big. Time to check the stats from the first half of play. Our Key Centurion Bank shares incorporated halftime stats, and look at that. Marshall, just one ru rushing yard. Passing yards, though, Marshall has the big edge. 94 to 24 in that category. Delaware with a slight edge in total yards, but maybe the key stat of the first half, Sonny, has to be those three big Delaware Blue Hen turnovers. No question about it. I mentioned at halftime, normally the other team turns it over for Delaware, but this afternoon, the Blue Hens have been the one to leave it on the ground. Tell you one thing, when you look at that one-yard rush, if you've got to run it just a little bit in order to throw it. All right, time of possession. Delaware has the edge there. Time to take a look at some of the halftime highlights. Action from the first half. Bill Vergentino over the Delaware top. on the board with a one-yard touchdown plunge. This goes over the top, airborne. When you're at the one, you don't have to go very far. Delaware was driving the football again down into Marshall territory when Brown coughed it up, stripped by Keenan Rhodes, and Donahue Stevenson made the recovery. Big, big play by the Marshall defense. Bobby Hugh Stevenson. And there's the big guy, the McBridge, Johnny McKee, with a one-yard touchdown run in the second quarter to get Marshall on the board. And that wraps up the scoring. Marshall 7, Delaware 7 here at halftime. Delaware will get the football first here in the third quarter. And in the first quarter of play, Sonny, that Delaware wing T gave Marshall fits. We'll see if Marshall can make adjustments in the third quarter when, their when the Thundering Herd defense gets out on the field. Willie Merrick is set to kick it off, set to receive it for the Delaware Blue Hens, Anthony Ventresca. And we are underway in the third quarter. Willie Merrick with an outstanding kick. Ventresca will take it at the three-yard line. And he is brought down at the 21-yard line. Demetrius Wilson makes the stop on the Marshall Special Teams Unit. The first half of action today at Marshall Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. Very, very aggressive and hard-hitting, and we're expecting the same kind of action here in the second half. Dave Weekly with Sonny Reynolds and Mark Martin this afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. Bill Vergentino, two of seven passing the football. Two interceptions, both by Marshall Shannon Morrison, but he's a magician with the football. Tubby Raymonds calls him a coach on the field. Bergantino, and the Marshall defense stretches it out. Nowhere to go. Rodney Garrett rides him out of bounds along with Donahue Stevenson. When you string it out, all of a sudden the advantage goes to the defense. Big, big play by Donahue Stevenson. Outstanding linebacker for Marshall. 
Bragantino fakes to his pullback. Quarterback keep. Nowhere to go with the football. Excellent defensive play by the Marshall defense. Bergantino is just the second four-year starting quarterback, and now we've got a new quarterback in the game. Handoff goes right up the middle. Brown carries it for the first down up to the 33-yard line, and we have got another quarterback in the game for the Delaware Blue Hens. Dale Fry. Dale Fry on his first, on the first possession, first time he's in the game. Hands to Brown, right up the middle, nothing fancy. Bergantino has not been 100%. Dale? That's had a real bad cold. Boy, he's been shaking. It's amazing he's even on the field. Dale Fry, a junior from Middletown, Delaware, in the game. And there's the handoff right up the middle to Brown again. And he's got another first down, busting his way out to the 45-yard line for a gain of 11. You mentioned it, Sonny. Bergantino's had a touch of the flu. Apparently, the fever broke late last night. And he played the first two quarters. But we've got to change at QB right now. Brown just busts up the middle. A burst puts him into the secondary. Dale Fry, nothing fancy here early. Daryl Brown has scored at least one touchdown in each of Delaware's last six games. And they ride that horse again. Brown out to the midfield stripe for a gain of five. It'll be second down at five. And they're gonna ride that horse till they stop him. Delaware took their opening possession of the game in for their touchdown of the first half and now they've moved the football from their 21 yard line out to the midfield strike we are just underway third quarter marshall seven delaware seven this is the ncaa one double a semifinal the winner of this game advances to the championship game next week here in huntington west virginia fry hot shot complete to cooper to the marshall 46 yard line it'll be third down in a yard give them a gain of four and when they mark the spot, it's going to be almost less than a yard. Awfully close to the third down conversion here. A little whirly bird. Watch Dale Fry here. A little whirly bird action. Hits Cooper on just a slant. Awfully close to the first down. Fry's got good size. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. Cooper, the leading receiver by far. Cooper's got the football, and he's got the first down to the Marshall 44-yard line. Marshall had good penetration into the backfield, but Fry on second effort picks it up. That was exactly what happened right there. They had Dale Fry stopped in the backfield for a long. And Fry with the extra effort. Extra effort gets it. Watch. Picks to his fullback. Reverse option. Just tucks the ball and gets the first down. Tubby Raymond said, Bergantino, if he was out here on the field today, he said it would be a miracle. And it's been a miracle in the first half, but I guess it's taken its toll. Fry, keeper to the 40-yard line and down to the 39-yard line of the Marshall Thundering Herd. Very aggressively running the option. Well, last week, Todd Donna did the same thing for Marshall. Replacing Michael Payton. Now we see Dale Fry from Delaware. Replacing Bergantino. Boy, he sees a seam there, a crack. He just gets all he can get. Delaware going against the wind. A 10-mile-an-hour wind. As a concern, Troy Brown looks on from the Marshall sideline. There's Brown down to the Marshall 35-yard line. It's going to be third and a yard again. A lot of grabbing, not a whole lot of tackling. But up front for the... Delaware Blue Hens, watch. There's, I'll tell you what, you can't hand the uh, hand grab. A couple of, uh, you can run through those. One arm tackle. You got to wrap them up. That's the only way a back like Brown will go down. Third down conversions. Marshall having trouble on third down. Delaware just shy of 50%. Fry got the first down and just great fundamental and athletic ability right there enabling him to die for the first down running the option Dale Fry just keeps the football Fry down to the 33 yard line and this drive on the ground is really eating up the clock now 10 41 to go third quarter we are not at a seven and Delaware slowly but surely moving into field goal range reverse option here Dale Fry makes to his fullback 
As I say, just a great effort, got the first down. First and 10, Delaware at the Marshall 33. This is the Blue Hens' first possession of the third quarter. And again, it's Brown to the 30-yard line. Give him a gain of three. Kind of an interesting situation as far as Delaware's field goal kicker is concerned. We'll get to that in a moment. Watch the reverse out here. Fry gives to Brown. Again, arm tackling. Picks up about three. Right now, the Delaware folks are knocking the Marshall people off the ball. Leo. Watch the line of scrimmage, Dave. Steve Leo is 5 of 10 in field goal tries, but just one of four inside the 29-yard line. He's got a 54-yarder to his credit. Kicked one through from 54 yards against Navy. Landu Johnson to the short side tries to turn the corner. And Charles McGregor is up to the task, knocking him out of bounds at the Marshall 28. McGregor standing home, the quarterback. Marshall on a little blitz. Watch number three, William King, right there. Gets blocked at the line of scrimmage, but he disrupts things. He's the one responsible that they don't get the big game, and McGregor's able to make the play. William King. Third down and five, Delaware at the Marshall 28-yard line. Will Fry put it up? Yes, he will. In and out of the hands of Dan Cooper at the 20-yard line. And George Thomas had the coverage for Marshall. Thomas had the cover, but Cooper should have had that football. Dan Cooper just runs a square out, Pat. Fry throws the ball pretty well on the run. Watch here. Not a tight sparrow. Right in the hand. All right, now we will get a look at Steve Leo. This will be 45. 45 yard field goal. A junior from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. It will come from the left hash mark, a 45 yard attempt. The holder is Dale Fry. This would give Delaware the lead. No, no, no good wide to the left. So both teams have missed their tight close one. Marshall defense holds. 9.28 to go. Third quarter. Marshall 7. Delaware 7. Leo. Leo just hooks it. Oh, that was awfully tight. He had plenty of leg. Just a little hook. Michael Payton to put it up for Marshall on first down. Drag down from behind. That Delaware defensive front comes up big. The front comes up big, but I tell you what, the secondary, Michael Payton had nowhere to go with the ball. Another coverage sack. Marshall with the edge and passing yards. This is the Thundering Herd's first possession of the third quarter. And how about those rushing yards? Down to the sidelines where Mark Martin is standing by. Mark? Dave, as we learned before the game, Bill Bergantino had been sick the past couple of days with the flu, and they said he really had a flare-up at halftime. That's why we saw Dale Fry on that opening series for the Blue Hens, so Bergantino should be back. Thanks, Mark. Glenn Pedro pulling his way in front of the Delaware Blue Hen bench across the 30 to the 32-yard line. That's a gain of 13. Scott Aker just saddles him up, but not before Glenn Pedro. This is just a pounding job as Johnny McKee tries to knock his man off the ball. You can see Acker on Pedro. Be third to about seven. Eight, ten to go. Third quarter moving clock. Third and six for Marshall at their own 33-yard line. He, he, Payton gets a great block has the first down. Knocked out of bounds at the Marshall 45-yard line. Glenn Pedro made the block. The Marshall fullback to enable Michael Payton to pick up the first down. Nowhere to go with the ball. Again, excellent coverage by the Delaware secondary. Michael Payton looking, looking, buying some time, tries to reload. Watch Glenn Pedro right there. What a great block. Took out linebacker Pat Mulhern. Michael Payton took advantage and went ahead and picked up the first down. Draw. Chris Parker had a good surge going to the 48-yard line, but he is tossed back by linebacker Chris Johnson. 
Marshall gets a pretty good spot on that delayed draw. It'll be close to the 49. Watch up front here. Little delayed draw. Bounces outside. Chris Parker, excellent speed and quickness. Just a freshman. Take it. Watch him get pinned double here. Chris Parker. Boy, he takes a hit by Chris Johnson. He doubles him over. Second down and six. Paints the pass again. The protection is good. Guns the football. Mills ball tipped. Pass is tipped by Tim Jacobs. I'll tell you what. Delaware is bringing some heat. You see a pretty good shot there of Coach Tim Donnan, the Marshall head coach. Tim Jacobs, as you mentioned, tipped the ball. Look how much heat Michael Payton, the Marshall quarterback, get. Has to go late with the ball. Third down and six, Marshall at their own 49-yard line. We're tied at seven. Another big third down. Four wide receivers for the first time today for Marshall. Payton to Ricky Carter. First down to the Delaware 42. All they do is hit that slant pattern. Delaware in a two-deep zone. Three-step drop here. Michael Payton on rhythm. Hits Ricky Carter. As Tim Jacobs makes the stop. You know, Sonny Marshall is a member of the Southern Conference, and we've just received word that the University of Tennessee Chattanooga has named Tommy West, the defensive coordinator of South Carolina, as the box new head coach. First and ten for Marshall. At the Delaware 43, Chris Parker trying to turn the corner, and he does so. And he's got another Marshall first down to the 32-yard line. The freshman's come up big here this afternoon, Chris Parker. Marshall's got a player down. Toss sweep to the far side. Chris Parker, he's got some surge here as he turns up field. Picks up excellent yardage. So both offenses showing life on their opening possessions of the second half. Delaware took the third quarter kickoff. Drove inside the Marshall 30-yard line, but misfired on a 45-yard field goal attempt by Steve Leo. Now Marshall's got a first down at the Delaware 31. Play action fake to Pedro. Payton guns the football. Incomplete intended for his tight end, Mike Bartram, at the 18-yard line. Could have been picked off. Marshall mascot, Marco. Got a couple of blue hens dangling on his string. Here you see Michael Payton on the boot, looking for Mike Bartram, the big tight end. Bartram juggles the ball just a bit. Tim Jacobs there to make the stop. Marshall working with the wind here in the third quarter. Clock stopped, 6.03 to go, second down and 10. Blitz, coming on the blitz. Screen. Pedro is able to make the catch. And he is on his way for a Marshall touchdown. What a great call against the blitz. You couldn't draw it up any better. Peyton to Pedro covering 31 yards, and Marshall has the lead for the first time today. A Marshall player now on the far side of the field. What Michael Payton here. Find some time. Sprint. Gets a blitz, it's a perfect call. Absolutely perfect. Glenn Pedro, the big pullback just rambles down the far side. There are no linebackers. Michael Payton, an excellent cut. Get the ball to Glenn Pedro. Sonny, once Glenn Pedro was able to elude the tackle attempt by Dominic Botto, he tight roped it down the left sideline for a 31-yard touchdown. Well, when you come on a blitz, there's nobody left except the secondary. Merrick. And the point after. And Marshall leads Delaware 14 to 7. Just under six minutes to go, third quarter. Marshall breaks a seven all tie on a 31 yard touchdown pass. Michael Payton to Glenn Pedro. Watch a blitz. Delaware coming on the blitz. Nice soft touch.
Michael Payton gets the ball to Glenn Pedro. Missed from the backside. Just tight rope. The far sideline. Seven plays, 71 yards, three and a half minutes. Pedro to Payton. Rather, Payton to Pedro, 31 yards for the score. Willie Merrick set to kick the football away. Michael Payton's numbers are improving. He's now 13 of 21 for 133 yards and a touchdown. Anthony Ventresca, they try to run the reverse. Ventresca holds on to the football, and he does a good job to get back to the 20-yard line, and Demetrius Wilson is down for the Marshall Special Teams unit, and he will need a bit of assistance coming off the field. That was a good one made the stop for Marshall. I'll tell you what, if he tried to hand it off, that ball would have been on the turf. Well, let's see if Delaware can answer. Delaware's starting quarterback, Bill Bergantino, appeared briefly in the third quarter and went back to the bench in favor of Dale Fry. And now Delaware finds themselves down for the first time today. And here comes Daryl Brown, and he's got lots of room all the way out to the 40-yard line. A gain of nearly 20. Well, that quiets the crowd. Sure does. Daryl Brown. Just a little delayed draw here. High hands to Brown. Watch Brown. Look at this hole. Great, Great block, block. Shannon King. Just an excellent block. Roger Johnson has to saddle him up downfield, but Brown's still running. You know, Delaware looks extremely quick playing on AstroTurf today. Demetrius Wilson being assisted to on the Marshall bench. Delaware has won seven of their last eight games on AstroTurf. Fry keeping spinning, a flag is down, so the Fry carries it down to the Delaware 46. See what the call is? I believe it's going to be against Delaware. Might have moved just a little bit early. Mark Goff coming against the Delaware Blue Hens. We mentioned in the first half, the winner of this game advances to the championship round. Illegal procedure on the offense. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. The winner of this game will meet the winner of tonight's game at Northern Iowa, as Northern Iowa plays host to Youngstown State, the defending NCAA 1AA champion. Now that Marshall is back in the lead, you can hear their fans getting into it a bit more here in Huntington, West Virginia at Marshall Stadium a venue where Marshall has posted a 17-1 mark since it opened last year. To the 38-yard line goes Daryl Brown. Just pounded now. Lots of talking going on down I'll there. I'll tell you what, there is some John and plenty of it. Awful lot at stake here, reverse out. Fry gives to Brown. Excellent job by the Marshall defense. Jim Durney at the bottom of the stack. Bill Bergantino and Tubby Raymond quoted in the local papers this week as saying they felt they could run the football on Marshall's defense. Fry to put it up. Cooper can't make a diving grab at the 48-yard line. Cooper would have been plastic man to get close to that one. Fry had him open. Third and a dozen. Big, big play for the Delaware offense. Marshall, of course, advanced to the 1AA championship game last year. Lost to Youngstown State in the finals. Delaware is 4-0 in 1AA semifinal action. They advanced to the championship game back in 1982 and lost to the eventual champion Eastern Kentucky 17-14. And now Fry wants to burn a timeout. The play clock was about to expire, and Fry burned a timeout. 4.16 to go third quarter. Marshall 14, Delaware 7. Hi. If you're a blue hen, I want to hear from you right now. I graduated from the De University of Delaware in 1990, and I went back for homecoming, and I know that the blue hens are good sports. So I want you to go to your phone and pick it up and give us a call. 560-3730, Terry Code 7. 14, Delaware 7. Tubby Raymond and the Blue Hens facing third and a dozen at their own 38-yard line. This game was tied at seven at the 
break, Marshall has added a touchdown. It leads 14 to 7. And the total yards. Marshall getting back into the hunt. Fry trying to set up the screen to Lane U. Johnson. Too much pressure. And I'll tell you what, Linton was right there. He had to throw the ball away. Watch Byron Linton here as Fry looks back across the field. Linton stays at home. He has to overthrow the ball, just gets it out of bounds. Byron Linton, the big 6'6 six, six senior. See if Troy Brown will light him up. Brian Myers sets a punt for the fourth time today. Line drive kick, Troy Brown watches it roll in front of him. And it'll be down to the 26-yard line, and that's where Marshall will start first and 10. 3.58 to go, third quarter. Marshall's got the football, and the herd leads Delaware 14-7. Here in Huntington, Marshall leading 14-7. An injury update for Mitchus Wilson was injured on that last kickoff for Marshall. A pulled quadricep muscle. He is out for the game, guys. Let's go back upstairs. All right, thank you very much, Mark. Demetrius Wilson, the sophomore from Apex, North Carolina. And Chris Parker surges forward to the 30-yard line for a gain of four yards. And Parker has done an admirable job replacing Orlando Hatchett. And there's a look at Demetrius Wilson working his way back to the facilities building. Michael Payton hands to Chris Parker. Ball almost got away from him. Parker now, nine carries at 40 yards. Second down and six at the 30. And here comes Parker again with a head of steam. And he fights his way with second effort near the first down, up at the 36-yard line. Matt Morrow tried to just take the ball away from him, trying to strip the ball. Watch Matt Morrow here. Parker has the ball. Here's the strip right there, but he doesn't get the football. Then he gets some air. Chris Parker was able to run out of the grasp of Matt Morrill, the 1AA All-American for Delaware. That doesn't happen very often. Parker heads to the sideline, and Leron Chapman, the sophomore from Huntington, enters the lineup for the first time today. On the carry, Glenn Pedro. He's got lots of room. Tripped up at the 50-yard line, down to the Delaware 47. Brian Craig makes the stop. Touchdown saving tackle for the Delaware Bruhead. That big fullback, Glenn Pedro, do a little raw and stomp it, but getting a lot of help up front for the big offensive line of Marshall. Craig saves six. Pedro now seven carries for 41 yards. The junior from Staten Island, New York. Two and a half minutes to go in a moving clock. Payton, the play action fake. Looking long, Will Brown's wide open. If he throws the ball inside instead of outside, it's six. Knows it. He'd love to have it back. Quick took the bite. Peyton had it for six. Delaware dodges a major bullet. Watch Michael Peyton pumps here. He knows he's got him. Will Brown. Oh no. Oh, I'd love to have it back. That's what he's saying. Second down and ten. Marshall at the Delaware 47. Three wide receivers, two to the right this time. Here comes Glenn Pedro, and he's into the secondary again, down to the 38-yard line, just shy of the first down. And right now, the folks from Delaware are just reaching and grabbing. Excellent blocking up front. Chris Deaton. What a block by Deaton. Marshall right side of the offensive line is very celebrated. Deaton is a first-team All-Southern Conference selection, and Phil Ratliff, the right guard, is a 1AA All-American. Third and a yard. Quarterback sneak. Payton, uh, pushes, push down. Payton pushes forward, and he picks it up. I'll tell you one thing, Dave. The big size advantage is starting to show now because I believe Marshall's starting to wear down Delaware. Marshall's offensive line outweighs Delaware's defensive line by about a dozen pounds per man. Just a quarterback sneak behind the big offensive line. More than enough for the first. They're going to make.
measure it. And I tell you what, if he sits down at first, I'm an astronaut. Well, Sonny, get on. I'm an astronaut. I'll tell you what, I thought he had the first down with room to spare. I thought he did too. It's fourth and inches, and Marshall will go for it. And we'll see the quarterback draw or the big top paladin, Glenn Pedro. Big sophomore offensive lineman William Panel has checked into the game for the Marshall Thundering Herd. From the eye, Parker is the tailback. Option. Parker, can he turn the corner? No. no sir. And Delaware holds. What a big play for Delaware defensively. I believe. Yes, sir. It's going the other way. Delaware takes over on downs. Yes, sir. A big, big play for the Delaware defense. We might look back at this one. Time to check the Budweiser scoreboard for other scores. Buffalo with a 21 to nothing lead in the third quarter at Rich Stadium over the Denver Broncos. National Football League action on a Saturday. College basketball. Penn State leading JMU at the break. Penn State finding it rough going early in the season. The Lions Lions getting ready to face their first season in the Big Ten. Fry's got it, late pitch, ball loose, out of bounds. Tried to flip it to Anthony Mitreska. Excellent job by the official on the far side. Dale Fry trying to get a little fancy. Watch Dale Fry here. Little dive option. Wanting very much to get rid of it. William King makes him get rid of it. William King. The junior from Charleston, West Virginia, right up in the face of Dale Fry. Second down and 11. Fry looking to throw. Complete to Cooper into Marshall territory at the 44-yard line and a first down. And Fry did a great job throwing across his body that time. No question about it. Shannon Morrison actually overran the ball. Off, awfully hard for Dale Fry, a right-hander the square shoulders throws the ball to Cooper Shannon Morrison runs underneath of it but I tell you what that was a heck of a throw and catch Dave. Cooper came up, comes up with a big big play there Cooper's had a couple of drops today but boy he did a fine job making an adjustment on that football and they convert and pick up the first down and we'd like to take a moment to thank Stewart's Hot Dog of Huntington for today's crew meal. Stewart's serving the Huntington area since 1932, owned and operated by four generations of the Mann family. Less than a minute to go, third quarter. Delaware's got a first down at the Marshall 44, trailing the thundering herd 14-7. Reverse fly to Cooper. He's got all kinds of trouble. Ridden down by Jim Durning from New Orleans. You're talking about being on the play. Rodney Garrett stays home and William King's there. On the reverse. Little reverse option. Trying to give it to the flanker coming back. Durning's there. A lot of folks are there. When you stay at home, you shut down those reverses. Jim Durning has really come up big on the defensive front for Marshall, stepping into the starting lineup after the injury to Bob Lane. Fry lets it fly for Cooper, and it's nearly picked off by Roger Johnson at the Marshall 35. Actually, he just threw that ball up for grabs. And, and Johnson almost comes down with it. We've come to the end of the third quarter. NCAA, 1AA semifinals, Marshall 14, Delaware 7. Hi. My name is Mary Claire Bresson, and I work here at Channel 50. Delaware's Dale Fry tries to find Dan Cooper, but Roger Johnson of the Thundering Herd will have none of it. Little throwback. And back to live action on third down and 19. Fry.
tries to set up the screen, and Byron Litton and Keenan Rhodes force the incomplete pass with outstanding pressure up the middle. And Rhodes wants an intentional grounding, but he's not going to get it. Brian Myers in to punt the football for Delaware. The way they're coming after it, they got 10 on the line of scrimmage. And here comes the herd. Almost got there. They get close to it. And Roger Johnson lets the ball bounce in front of him out of bounds at the 22-yard line. And you can always tell when the herd is set to try to block the punt because Roger Johnson will go back as the lone safety and Troy Brown's on the line of scrimmage. Exactly right. You kick your best athlete, come and bring him up there, give him, a, give him a lane, and let him lay out. And there's a good look at Michael Pate heading back to the huddle to start the fourth quarter for the Marshall Thundering Herd. The holder of every conceivable passing record in the Southern Conference. And here comes Glenn Pedro to the short side. He puts his head down and pulls his way across the 30 to the 31-yard line for a gain of eight. And right now, Sonny Marshall is controlling the line of scrimmage. Control the line of scrimmage. We talked about the size advantage. They're starting to wear him down up front. Johnny McKee gets his man hooked. Pedro runs awfully hard into the secondary. Scott Aker. One of the keys of Delaware's 11-2 record in their Yankee Conference Championship ball control. But here in the second half, it's been Marshall controlling the football. Second and a yard. Here comes Pedro again. He's got the first down. And then some to the 35-yard line. Make it the 36. That's a gain of five for Glenn Pedro. And you know, Marshall would like to control the ball and control the clock at this stage of things. The big offensive line. Glenn Pedro behind him. Well, you can see they're knocking folks off the ball right now. If you joined us late, Delaware took a first quarter lead when Bill Vergentino dived over for a one-yard touchdown run. Second quarter, Johnny McKee answered with a touchdown for the Marshall Thundering Herd. In the third quarter, Peyton hit Glenn Pedro on a screen pass that covered 31 yards to make it 14 to seven. And that's where we stand. Chris Parker gets ahead of steam and carries it up to the 38-yard line, but he is hammered down. Hammered down by the Delaware defense right up front. Mark Rubar watch the guards pull got both guards pulling Rubar stays at home and makes the stick and that is a stick give Parker a gain of two second down and eight play action fake to Pedro Guns it in and out of the hands of Troy Brown at the 49-yard line. It would have been a tough catch for Motto. touchdown Troy Brown. Motto was in pursuit. But Michael Payton can handle those kind of folks in the open field. Looking for his favorite receiver, Troy Brown. To reach today's semifinal game, Delaware defeated Sanford in the first round of the playoffs, 56-21. Then they defeated Northeast Louisiana on the road last week, 41-18. Marshall blanked Eastern Kentucky 44-0 and defeated Middle Tennessee State last week, 35-21. On really third and eight, Peyton's got lots of time, and he's got Troy Brown for a first down at the Delaware 45. And Michael Peyton's down. That's a gain of 16. And that is up. He took a shot. You give Peyton that much time, Troy Brown will find a way to get open. Straight drop back, just a seven-step drop. Looking for Troy Brown, who's crossing over the middle. Troy Brown comes up with an excellent catch. And we'll watch Troy, what Mike Peyton, Peyton say, well, that really wasn't that good a shot. Dominic Botto. Pretty good action job with the lick on Peyton. And here comes Glenn Pedro up the middle. Not much running room. The defensive front of the Delaware Blue Hens tightens up. Little stutter step at the line of scrimmage. But a big pullback. And Delaware shuts the door. Jim Dodder. 
Hadn't changed expressions a whole lot. Marshall University football coach Jim Donnan in his third season and across the way in his 27th year. Tubby Raymond. Knows he needs the ball back. 11.45 to go in the game. Moving clock. Second down and nine. Marshall at the Delaware 43. Short side handoff. Glenn Pedro. Lots of running room. Tracks his way down to the Delaware 34-yard line. Close to a first down. Close enough to measure. Again in the trenches. Marshall's winning the battle. I mean, they came down the left side. Coming from the secondary to make the stop. Warren McIntyre. I'll tell you what, that was another great block by Chris Deaton for Marshall. He just took Mike Bandish, the middle linebacker, right out of the play. That was a deep cleater. And you can see how close it is. Don't think the Marshall crowd has been real, real excited about the spots this afternoon. Not by a long shot. Our referee today is L.V. McGinty, and this officiating crew is from the Ohio Valley Conference. Pedro last week with a 100-yard day, and he's got 73 yards thus far this afternoon and a very impressive 6.1 yards per carry. Peyton fires through and picks up the first down. He got right behind his right guard, Phil Ratliff, and picked it up easily, but a flag is down. That, this is not your conventional quarterback sneak right over the center. All he does is run down the line of scrimmage until he finds a hole. Got a flag down. against Delaware the call so Marshall keeps the drive alive offside on the defense five yard penalty first down so the infraction moves the football to the 30 yard line and you can see not too many penalties today been an excellent play football game and very very clean think they'd start to wear out about this time of year. This is the 14th game for both these teams. Almost like playing in the National Football League. And they are going at it tooth and nail to see which one of these teams will play a 15th game for the championship of 1AA. Play action fake to ball. Pedro. Payton turns the corner. Knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. That's a gain of eight. Matt Morrow had dead aim on Payton that time. Peyton just out quickly. He likes to keep it on the boot. Takes to his fullback, Glenn Pedro. Matt Ball right there, a little fake right there. Swats the uh, defensive end. Then Michael Peyton does the rest. Knocked out of bounds. Brian Quigg. Second down and two. Will Brown puts out wide to the left. Ricky Carter is to the short side to the right. Pedro. And off Glenn Pedro. He's got the first down. And he fights his way down to the 13-yard line. A gain of nine. And there's no question that Marshall's big offensive front is starting to wear down the smaller blue hand. And in the absence of Orlando Hatchet, Glenn Pedro is the man for the Marshall ground game. Watch him up front. Looking right at him. Glenn Pedro runs to a tackle. Runs to another. He was able to avoid the tackle attempt by Pat Mulhern at Fuller's way for a first down. This is the tenth play of the drive. Cuts back inside. But boy, there's not a whole lot there. Not a lot of room for Pedro to the short side. Two yards at best. But Marshall is really eating up the clock now. We're down to ten minutes to go in the game. From the end zone, 
Peyton hands to his fullback, Glenn Pedro. McMurdy stays at home. Excellent. They swarm defensively, Delaware does. Troy Brown comes in motion to the wide side. Draw. Here comes Pedro right up the middle, inside the five, down to the two-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Marshall. will be five, I believe. We get another look at Glenn Pedro's run. Look at the hole he has we to run through. Start on the offense, five-yard penalty, replay first down. This sheds a little different light on the subject here. Yeah, it certainly does on that replay that we just saw of Glenn Pedro. Great block that time by Marshall's left guard, Trevor Thomas. And the large one comes out of the game. Marshall attendance today, 16-323. 16-323 on hand for this NCAA, one AA semifinal game. First and goal back at the six now. And here comes McKee. Across the five and down to the four-yard line. That'll run some time off the clock. <laughs> I thought the large one was out of the game. At 330 pounds, hard to believe he was a running back back in high school. But you mentioned before, Sonny, that was about 100 pounds ago. At least. Big Johnny McKee. The low back. Looks like a bunch up back there, but there's just one. There you can see him pounding him. They go pound him some more. Second down and goal at the four. McKee again. And the only way you can tackle him is to get underneath on him. Mike Bandish. Bandish did just that. Trips up McKee. Now we can see Jim Pedro back in the game. Watch Johnny McKee when he squats, it takes him a while to get going. Mike Bandish, watch him go underneath, cuts his legs out from under him. And that was the free safety also, Warren, Warren McIntyre. Warren McIntyre was there along with Bandish. Now he's back in his regular spot. They're going to let Jim Pedro have a pop at it. Pedro is the lone setback on third and goal at the four. We got a blitz. Peyton rolling to the wide side. Peyton's in. Touchdown, Marshall Thundering Herd. Just sprints to the wide side. Quarterback keep. Watch Pedro lead the way. Quarterback keeper all the way. Michael Peyton, if he goes outside, just walks in. Tim Jacobs is there. But Michael Payton gets in the end zone. And for Michael Payton, that's his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. David Merrick is on to attempt the extra point. And right now, you would think Marshall has the upper hand. Thundering Herd has scored 21 unanswered points and with seven and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter lead Delaware 21-7. Okay, seven, you heard it there, seven and a half minutes left in the game. Marshall fans, looks like you could be... Anthony Petrescu from the 10. And the ball is loose. And it's a flag on the pin. Flag down. Delaware retains possession. 13 plays, 78 yards, and check the time, 7.05. Payton finishes it with a three-yard touchdown run. Most impressive.
offensive drive of the day for Marshall. Then Treska. Ball stripped away here. Delaware recovers. Rodney Organ. Dale Fly at the controls of the Delaware attack. Hammered. Complete. Cooper's got it at the 44-yard line. Rodney Garrett absolutely thrilled Fly, and he still threw a perfect strike to Cooper for now, a first down. You're talking about courage now. Rodney Garrett, I mean, was all over Fry. Dale Fry, you're talking about standing tall. Rodney Garrett put the hurt on him. Roger Johnson makes the stop. I mean, this is a heck of a play here. I mean, a big-time play. Look at that in his face. Handoff inside, spinning his way up to the 49-yard line for the Delaware Blue Hands goes Marcus Lewis, the senior halfback. And the wing T formation.